Welcome to Maths Digital. My name is Aaron, and today we are going to continue our discussion on multivalue. We are going to have a practical session. In the first part, we've covered the theory behind multivalue. We have seen how we can represent a customer record in both a multivalue database and in a relational database. We've come to a conclusion that multivalue databases can be more efficient because of the way data is stored and processed. Today's session is going to be more technical. We are going to see how to work with multivalue in T24, that is, how to extend multivalued fields, how to add subvalues using classic user interface. Then we are going to see how data is stored in a multivalued database. We conclude our session by writing a subroutine and a program in InfoBasic to fetch multivalue data from a database and represent them to the user. I hope you will learn a lot of skills in this session that will help you in your day-to-day -day job. Please consider subscribing if you haven't to keep me motivated. Share and like this video. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let me start by opening the same record we've seen last time in T24. The record is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 7. This is how it looks like in the browser as well. As you can see, single valued fields do not contain any numbers and a dot. Multivalue fields, though, they have dot and numbers. I'll be using a classic as I think it is more convenient and faster. But again, this is my personal preferences. Even if I would advise every developer to get familiar with a classic. So throughout this course, we'll be using classic user interface. So as you can see, this is the same record, which we've seen the last time. Now, let's see how to add a new employer. For that, we are going to open the same record in input mode. So I use comma version, so uh, I don't need to authorize again. Same record in I. This is what we have when we open it in input mode. So if you move to the last one, 76.2 it is here so it's not the cursor is not visible but it's blinking here maybe it's not seen but it's blinking here okay now let's move to the next field control F enter now the, now you can see clearly that it's blinking so we are now positioned on field 77.2 so I can do this Enter, and as you can see now we have seven dot three. So now I can add another employment history. I'm going to add uh, my last employment in Rwanda. I was employed before moving to Luxembourg. For the occupation, I was chief information officer. And the employer name was AB Bank Rwanda PLC. Now address, I don't remember the exact address, but it is in Kiovo. Now if I want to expand this, I can do this. Kiovo, let's say Nyarugenge, hit enter. Then Kigali. Yeah, let's keep this. I'm not going to mention um, the salary, the bonus, and so on. 
and let's authorize control v enter it says a start date start date i think was um 2017 2017 it says 2017 december 01 it's because it's mandatory okay perfect so now now if we view our customer record let's open it in c mode now we have uh 70.1 employed okay 73.1 it's bank populaire 73.2 is rwanda development board and next 73.3 is ab bank rwanda plc so this is how you work with uh, uh multi values in uh, t24 from the front end of course you can use desktop or browser but i prefer classic it's faster and i think it's better okay fantastic our record now is authorized as you can see same inputer same authorizer today at this time now let's move to programming now we are going to write a small program now uh, to work with this record. I'll show you how it is represented now in database. Okay. To give you an idea. <clears throat> so I, we can do city. City is going to, to open the record but in read-only mode. Okay, So we don't want to, to jade our customer record. Because if you accidentally move the line and then it's going to be hard to reconstruct the record, okay? fbnk.customer, that's the table. And the record number is this, okay? Hit enter. If it's 70 employed, so the, meaning the first value is employed. The second is self-employed. And the third one is employed. Field 71, we have the first value, head over to operations. You know, have telemedicine project, admin. Then the third value, you have chief information officer. Field 73 here. We have bank populaire, then value mark as a separator. Rwanda development board, there's a second value. And the third value, AB Bank Rwanda. So you see how this stored in the database when you move on 74 we have avenue de l'armée now sub value marker kiovu sub value marker kigali so this this is these are sub values for the first multi value and then for the second multi value we have two sub values gishushu and kigali and for the third one, we have Kiovu, Nyarugenge, Kigali. Good. Now, I think we are done with multi-value. But now since course is about programming, let's write a program to work with multi-value. As usual, let's check the sync, our training, our script is on. I'm going to split here. Yeah. Good, it's working. Now, as usual here, we open T24. Telnet, I'm using Telnet, you can use SSH. SSH is more secure. So my IP address. Let's see. Okay, finally it comes. T24. Okay, type password. I type my password. Okay. I don't want to go to T24. 
let me expand this expand this as well I type one to log into t24 I go back fantastic okay um, let's see oh, by the way it is the best practice to have a prefix for all your programs normally this is agreed upon the company this is to avoid any name collisions with uh, the core subroutines all my programs are going to be prefixed by MTD meaning math is digital you can use whatever prefix you have agreed upon in your company okay Matival.b. Okay. Now, as you know, we say program MTD. Now I've changed multi value. Sorry. Okay. For us not to forget, we type end. I think you are getting familiar with this. So to test this, let's uh, print. multi value in action okay let's save our program mathc.bp mathc.bp then uh, i write the name of my program which is mtd dot multi value and I forgot I multivalue dot B it enters you can see it's blank old school come here I do paste now I do F5 okay fantastic It is less basic. Compiled successfully. It's catalog. Fantastic. It's working. We can run our program mtd dot multivalue. Good. We see multivalue in action. Just like the last time, let's clear our screen to have more space. We do CRT at minus one. Okay. We've seen this last time. And probably we don't need this. Well, when working with D24, it's kind of different. I think the proper way is to write a subroutine, which is going to fetch data from uh, T24 database, then you return values. Our program is going to be used as input and output for the user, meaning it is going to collect input, which is customer ID from user, pass the ID to the subroutine. The subroutine is going to use it to fetch all the data from T24 database and then return the values we want to the program. And then our program is going to output those values. I think this is the proper architecture for this small program. I can say print maybe enter the customer ID. Okay. It's going to print here. Now to get the value from the user, okay, you can see input takes an expression and then the variable to store our input is going to be custom ID. Okay, now let's uh, output this. So you entered the Customer ID and you concatenate it with cast ID. Okay. We are going to print this message 
first we are going to clear the screen then we are going to print a message on uh, on the screen enter the customer id okay and we are going to collect the input what the customer is going to enter into this variable called cast id this is what we do and then we are going to input a message say you entered the customer id that customer id that they have entered okay good let's give it a shot we copy our program jet let's delete this one fd yes okay and then we paste format it it's okay if i let's compile no errors that's good news we catalog okay and then let's run okay it clears the screen then it says enter the customer id and it gives us a prompt so we say one 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 two seventeen enter said you enter the customer id one 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 two three. so if you run it again and give it a different customer okay enter say you entered this custom okay we know our program is working it's taking input and it's storing the value customer id now as i said let's let's write now a subroutine and the subroutine is going to get input as a customer id okay was my presentation let me show you powerpoint so as you can see we have a customer code so our program is going to take this customer code or customer id how you call it i'm calling it just customer id because it's the id of a customer and we are going to collect all this information now we don't have two we have three employers because remember we've added one so let's see I'm to minimize so probably i'll keep this as a reference um so let's write our our, our, our subroutine i'm going to introduce you to subroutine now now let's create a new file as we've said we are going to proceed all our programs with uh, this uh, <coughs> mtd uh, what would, would be the, the the proper name now what about employee details yeah. is it the customer details employee details or customer employment details yeah I think this is the correct name so we don't want to have a very long name let's say let's call it cast uh, employment details okay cast employ employment details. Oh, this is what if you say cast employee details is it a descriptive name? I think it's a descriptive uh, name for, for a program. Okay, it's not long and it's, and, it, and it's clear. So it's a cast, stands for customer employee details. Anyone can guess that this is, we're talking about customer employment details, right? Good. So, a subroutine is different from a program so subroutine starts with the word subroutine so we write subroutine and we put the name okay and we can say which parameters we want let's start with the inward parameters 
we want to correct customer ID. Okay, you can name it how you want. And then the outward parameters. Okay, here we have, um, what do we want? Let's see what we have here. We have employment status, occupation, employer's name, and employer's address. I think we can have this. So we have um, one, two, three, four. We have four output parameters. So employment status, occupation, employer's name. I think I remember. So I can say. Oh, sorry. Employment status, occupation, employer's name. Then we have employer's address. Okay. Let's keep it short like employer's ad, okay? Now, here we can have the comment. I'm going to reserve this place for comments. The best practice you need to say what your program does or subroutine does. So I can say um, subroutine to fetch employment details of a customer okay of a customer then I can say I have in parameter I say cast ID then you can have out this so that the person who is going to, to read our program may know what they can expect as input and what they can expect as output employment status. Okay. You can add um, depending on I can say author. Okay. Say our developer my credentials are at mathc.io. Um, I can put probably the date when this was programmed. Let's push this, we align it properly. the same line and I push too much yeah, I can add the license as well um, today we are on the 20th of um, let's keep it like this 2020 September 20th. I think this is clear. Anyone can know this. Probably I also add this. Okay. All right. These are the best practice. So these are the best practice. Now for a subroutine, you always, always insert two files in this order you insert so my inserts are in t24.bp I need to reference the folder for all the inserts so I common I common holds all the common variables okay then we have T24.bp 
I equate, okay? You always, always have to do this. A subroutine returns and end. Actual, you can have this. Okay, I think it's better we do this. You can have this as a template. So whenever you start your your subroutine, you give it a name. It, if it has the parameters, you put the parameters, comma separated, you insert I common and I equate. Always, always. And then don't forget that subroutine returns. So you need to put return and then you put end. Now, since we'll be working with the customer file, so we need to also insert the customer file, okay? Because we need the fields from the customer. So, t24.pp, an insert file for the customer is if.customer, okay? So this is the insert file for, for, for the customer. Okay, good. So for with this, we have inserted the common variables and the customer, since we are going to work with the customer. So we can start, I can say, you start by <coughs> SAFCast. FCast is going to be our file name, which we'll be working with, which is f.customer. Okay, then we need to define also the handler. We need to initialize the handler to, to null. Okay, and now here we can open it, but let me, before I forget, let me also initialize uh, the variable where our record that we are going to read is going to be hold. Also to empty, okay? So this part we are initializing the variables, variable for file, file handler, and for record. Now we can also initialize other variables that actually can even pick this. Let me grab this actual these names because these are going to be the same variables. And do this. I want them to have an initial value of none as well. Okay, empty. I think that's too much. Okay. the best practice to initialize the your variable your variables okay so we are done with initializing our variables now the first thing we need to do we need to open this customer file okay and we we get a file descriptor okay a file handler you open a file and you get a reference to it or a pointer to that, to that file. And the pointer you store this in another variable. So for that, what we do, it's the best practice to use call OPF, which is open file in short. And this is a subroutine developed by terminals. It's, so it's a core subroutine. Why? We could just do open this file and we reference the pointer. But this OPF is going to cache for other requests. Uh, the first parameter is uh, the file name and the second is the pointer or the handler. Now, after opening our file, we can read now the record. Okay. 
which we are getting here custom id okay we want to read this custom id so for that to read it we use again another subroutine developed by terminus a core subroutine called f dot read again you can do read directly but it's not recommended we use f read it has five uh, parameters okay parameter number one is our file name because we're reading from this file parameter number two is the record id the record we want to read want to read customer id okay parameter number three is whatever you're going to read we are going to store the, the result of the record we are reading so we are going to store this and this variable called rec and parameter number four is the pointer okay to our file and which is also return value is the error in the case there's an error so if our program is going to fail to read this customer it's going to return an error otherwise we're going to have the record okay now after reading now what we can do now we can assign values remember we initialize them to null now let's give them values okay now the values where they coming from they are coming from this record okay so we can type here customer record and this is dynamic array and we said the, the way we access dynamic array we use angle brackets so we are going to put everywhere here so technically we could say if you want the employment status we would say 70 we could type here sorry not here in our program we could say our employment status is fit 70 okay and here we could say 71 73 and uh, the address is uh, which field 74 74 we could do that but this is a no a big no never do that it will work because these are the index we know on field 70 we have this employment status but again what if tomorrow terminus changes instead of 70 being uh, the customer status maybe it becomes maybe they insert another field in the new release and it becomes now 73 or 75 you say our oh, program will not work because the index has changed and t24 is uh, an evolving uh, product so it keeps changing what we need to do here we need to put the field names and that's why we have this file insert file for customer use ct okay uh-huh you see we have equate equals equate so meaning on one it's going to take eb.customer.mnemonic and it's going to be assigned to index one and so on and if we go down we know we start from 70 what 70 as you can see here fit 70 index 70 on 70 we have the name of our field is eb.cast.employment.status so we grab this one again if you look at our presentation 70 is employment this is what we want 70 and you see here 70 okay so we grab this one 70 so we come to a program we put the name okay like this so eventually when the system is going to see eb.cast 
cast.employment status is going to read in this file, insert file and say 70. So behind the scene, the system is going to grab 70, which you had. Now let's move quickly. We grab 71, it's occupation. Okay, I think now we know. So replace with, with it. Then we grab 73. So we leave 72. We pick 73. Okay. Player name. Put it here. We move to the next, which is 74. 74 and paste it here okay sweet so with this we are compliant with the best practice and we know if tomorrow terminus uh, changes the field number the index we will not be in trouble our program will still work okay so let's revise this quickly we see Let's push this down to so our program. It's 32 lines, just 32 lines with the comments. So we have the name of our subroutine with all the parameters in and out. Okay. As I said here, a customer ID is the in parameter and the out parameter is one, two, three, four. Employment status, occupation, employer's name and employer's address okay here as i said we always always insert these two regardless of a program of subroutine we are going to write and in this order you insert icom and i equate and then we insert our file name which we are going to use for for this dynamic array so that the system may pick the proper the proper index so we insert it and then we initialize all our variables that we are going to use okay after initialization we open the file we read the record and then we assign values from dynamic array, from this record, which is a dynamic array, which is return. And then we return and end. So this, this is short how a program works. I think it's clear, sweet, short, sweet, and clear. And to my regard, it's written professionally, but let's see if it's going to run. <laughs> it could be a nice program Nice looking, but not working. But let's see. Okay. So we do jade. Mathis dot. It's Mathis dot bp. The name of a program dot b. Hit enter. So okay, it's empty. We're going to grab our source code. We paste, okay, control V, so I'm going to format our code, F5, okay, let's open it again. Okay, program looks well. Now, we quit. What we need to do, we need to compile so use basic i hope you remember compiled successfully we need to catalog fantastic wow for the very first time there's no error fantastic this is a very good sign so so now let's complete our program here we are getting the customer ID, but we need to find a way to output 
this information all right actually let me grab this okay because as a basis we are going to to use this we are going we're going to need this information let me put it here okay nice yeah we see customer id no let's say, say customer id this is the customer id let's say let's duplicate some more times this string sorry Going to duplicate this some more times four times I think yeah okay like this now we have employment status very nicely employment status and we can have our employment status here, not ID. Let's put it here. Next is occupation. We grab our occupation. Lee employer's name let's call this employers yeah can call this employers nice employers address to get rid of this Okay. Employer's address. So we do this. Now let's format it nicely. I think the longest one is this one. We align all this. Let's do this. <clears throat> I learn all this on the basis of this one. See it. So I want this to look nice. Okay. So we have this. Now we need to call our subroutine. Sorry, we've seen this. Call subroutine, subroutine, we call our subroutine and the name and we grab all the parameters, okay? So we call our subroutine with all the parameters in and out, okay? So eventually it's going to call this uh, subroutine, employee details, pass in custom ID which we grab from the user and then it is going to return all these values, okay? Which we then print here nicely, okay? That's all. That's all, really. Our program is ready. But if you remember last time, uh, these much values, they return some weird characters. So let's we know that so from uh, remember from our last video so i've told you that we can format this using mcp fmt mcp so let's apply the same because occupation is also multi value right these are multi values so we know that so let's apply the same principle 
very nice okay we don't have to worry about custom id because it's a single value so we can just output this okay nice so our program is ready so let's grab it okay i can delete this fd y jd we paste nice escape fi we save and then we need to compile using basic great compiled successfully now we need to catalog fantastic compiled great we have no errors now sometimes let's go back to t25 and go back now let's run our, our program and see we'll give it a shot uh-huh run ask our custom id we have 111217 enter fantastic uh -huh. so as you can see we have a very nice output we have custom id we have employed so employment status the first field is employed the second self-employed the third employed we have three occupations so head of it operations telemedicine project admin chief information officer we have bank popular as the first employer the second employer is rwanda development board and the third is ab bank plc then we have three addresses corresponding to these two to these three em employers the first address of uh, bpr it has three uh, 32 avenue de l'armée kiovu kigali then the address for the second field which is um, for rdb is gishushu kigali and the third kiovu nyarugenge kigali corresponding to ab bank rwanda congratulations you see now you know how to work with multi value from all the angles to summarize we've seen how to work with multi value in t24 how multi value is structured in a database and then we wrote a program which brings all this information nicely and prints in a nice way that we see on the screen this is amazing we have reached to the end of our today's session let me conclude by thanking you again for your time you have taken to watch this video i hope you have found it very informative i highly encourage you to practice everything that we have seen today watch this video multiple times and try to understand all the concepts if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment and I will make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't to keep me motivated to do more videos like this. Share and like this video. See you next. Bye bye.